Senator, yesterday at uh, Trump's press conference, he said the following. Listen to the clip. There has been so much unnecessary death in this country. It could have been stopped, and it could have been stopped short. But somebody a long time ago, it seems, decided not to do it that way. And the whole world is suffering because of it. <laughs> so, oh. so, Senator, who do you think that... That some who do you think that somebody is that he's referring to? Who could it be? I just keep going to the fact first of that we need both confidence and compassion in the White House right now. Uh, the words unnecessary death, when I think of those that I know uh, that have died and people's loved ones that have died, I like those words. The second thing I don't like about this is when you look back in time, I, I think back to Donald Trump at the Republican convention when he said, I alone can fix this. Remember that? He was talking about government. Yep. Now you fast forward to this major international crisis and he's saying, I'll take a back seat to the governors. And while the governors clearly should have a major say in the openings of their economies and work regionally, that's a good thing. There are some things that can't take a back seat. A president has to show compassion for his people. He shouldn't be dividing people. They should be able to look for him as a leader, and he should be devising the strategy for a vaccine and testing and everything that we need, not just play backup. So he loves to blame other people. And it's basically a twist on what Harry Truman once said, the buck stops here. With Donald Trump, it's the buck stops everywhere but here. And that's why I think Joe Biden um, would be such an amazing president, because he's someone that has actually overseen major government programs. He's someone that made sure the money got where it was supposed to be uh, when we had that Recovery Act during the last economic downturn. And he's someone that certainly has compassion for the people of this country. Senator, you know, I said yesterday that Dr. Birx is part of the problem because she's legitimizing his misinformation by sort of providing him this veneer of credibility. And, and the GOP, in my view, is also enabling him, too, by pivoting blame to China. Republicans are supposed to be the, uh, the party of family values, but we've had 56,000 deaths in American families from this virus and record unemployment. Why do they still stand behind this president? And are they complicit for covering up these actions and having a playbook, a literal playbook that blames everyone but Trump? You know, uh, these are doctors and they're there to do their job. And she has vast medical experience. She's someone that has worked under Republican and Democratic presidents and has a lot of credibility. She and Dr. Fauci. And, you know, do I agree with everything they say every day uh, when they're responding to Trump? No. But do I think it's important that they're there and we have some medical sanity and we have people that are actually trying to get the facts out? That is so important to me. That goes beyond politics. And so that's my first answer. The second is the buck stops there. There's really one person that's responsible for this disinformation, uh, for blaming other people, for not responding early enough to get the testing going uh, that we're starting to see now happen state by state, slowly but surely. And that is the man who's in charge. That's Donald Trump. I remember Andrew Cuomo once saying a few months ago, if you're mad about something, you call me. That's the attitude a leader has. And that is not what we have seen coming from the White House. It's the blame game every single day. And remember, pre-pandemic, he was blaming the head of the Federal Reserve when things didn't go well, who he appointed. He was blaming the generals in his command, uh, who he appointed. He was blaming uh, the country of Denmark. Who does that? Uh, this has been a long-standing problem, and now the Americans are seeing it every single day at those press conferences. And it's not what we want in leadership. Leadership is about immediately responding to the crisis, protective gear and the like. It's about the short term, getting the economy going. But boy, is it about the long term. And that's a vision for our country and where we go from here. That's what great leaders do. Senator Klobuchar, it's Megan again. Um, can we talk about 2020 and the future going forward? 
Um, I sort of expected, I think, like a lot of Americans, that during a global crisis, it would make our country come together. And I've been very disappointed to see, you know, from the top down, but everywhere, just even even stronger divisions in the country that have never existed. And now we have 26 people on unemployment, 4 million away from where it was during the first Great Depression. I think we're on our way easily into a second one. Um, what do you think... Democrats need to do going forward in 2020 to give Republicans the kind of understanding and reassurance that they can take the lead on this. Because at this point, if all Republicans are to blame for being complicit with President Trump, it's not really a winning message for people like me to go over to the other side. Yeah. Um, and I know you're bringing a baby into this new world. I am. <laughs> and I we Crazy. have a big state like every other American. And I think this is about coming together um, and not blaming people. We were able to successfully pass legislation um, by working across the aisle. You know, I do that all the time. And I think that's got to be a big part of this. But we have to put our country ahead of all. And our country right now is saying, let's disregard these negative comments that aren't based on truth and let's move our economy forward. So those businesses that are boarded up. Those are the hopes and dreams of Americans that have put their lifetimes into them. Uh, those seniors that are sitting in assisted living who want to have a visitor, um, they need visitors. So we need to do this together with a long-term plan and compassion and competence. I believe we can do that. The answer is the election.